everyone and welcome back to Upside Down Disney. If you are new here, my name is Jess and today, in case you cannot tell by the fact that I am not wearing ears, um, I have a bit of a different video for you guys. So I've been talking about showing off my Stranger Things Funko Pop collection for quite some time now and I figured what better time than spooky season because Stranger Things is a pretty spooky show. Um, one of the seasons takes place like totally around the Halloween season. So I thought this would be the perfect time to finally go ahead and do this video and live up to the upside down portion of my channel name. Um, in case anybody did not know, um, I got the inspiration Upside Down Disney from my love of Stranger Things and also my love of Disney. Stranger Things is easily one of my favorite TV shows of recent years. Um, and I have kind of gone crazy on the Funko Pop train. Um, I literally, you can see some of the boxes like stacked up behind me. Um, or I guess in the corner of the frame, like right over there. But um, yeah, I have almost all of them that are in existence. There are very few that I'm missing. There's maybe like 10 or less that I am actually missing from this collection. Um, only one of them I would say is something that is very like out of my reach of ever getting and that is the gold hopper from San Diego Comic-Con. I believe it was three years ago, two or three years ago. There was like 40 of him made and he's worth like $2,000 even still. So that is something that I will probably never have in my life. But the rest of the collection, I think that I can totally complete. Um, but so here's, this is going to be where I'm at so far. Um, I kind of was cleaning up the shelves where I have all my Stranger Things pops. So I had to move a lot of them off the shelf anyway. So I figured that this would be the perfect time to do a Stranger Things Funko collection video. So this is going to be a super long one and this is also going to be my first like showing off a collection video. So let me know what you guys think of it um, and if you would like to see more of this kind of content leave a comment down below and let me know and also give this video a huge thumbs up. And without further ado I am just going to get right into showing you these pops. So all of these are inbox pops because I am trying to be a Stranger Things collection completist. I have not taken any of them out of the box except for one which I will show first um, but after that everything is kind of uh, categorized by season that the pop came from so I have season one two and three and then I have just kind of like a miscellaneous category which you will see why it's a miscellaneous category um, but that will be the last category that I will show so first the one out of box pop that I have is the 10 inch Demogorgon. Um, I, any 10 inch pops that I have, I take out of box or I will be taking out of box just because they are huge and it's really hard to like store a 10 inch pop box someplace. Um, so the easiest way to store them is to just take them out of the box. They usually don't end up being worth too much more than what I paid for them anyway. Um, so here he is the Demogorgon. Okay, so kicking off with season one Stranger Things pops, we are going to start off with my girl, Barb. So Barb is a character that only appears in season one and she is Nancy's best friend who unfortunately um, goes missing and unfortunately dies in the upside down. Um, but she was kind of like the voice of reason <laughs> friend. Next up is a Hot Topic exclusive and this is Eleven Underwater. So it is just her when she's in that little suit that they used to put her into submerge her in like the water tank. Next up is the 11 with Egos pop. This is just the common version. This one also has a chaser, which I will be showing in a few minutes. But here she is in her pink dress with the shaved head and the Ego waffles that she stole from the grocery store. Next up is 11 in her hospital gown. So this is from when she is still at the Hawkins lab. Um, up next is a two pack. Um, and this was an FYE exclusive and that is 11 with Egos and Mike. Um, so these are literally just the common 11 and the common Mike pops just put together in a two pack. Up next is Joyce in her biohazard suit. This one was a Target exclusive um, and probably one of the hardest for me to get. And then to go with Joyce, we have Hopper in his biohazard suit. And this one was a Hot Topic exclusive. Up next, we have just the uh, common Hopper pop from season one. So I do have the Chase version of him as well, but here he is in the common version. He just has his coffee cup and a donut because mornings are for coffee and contemplation. Up next, we have Mike, just the common Mike pop from season one. He's got his little walkie talkie and his backpack on. Up next is a uh, 2017 
New York Comic Con or Fall Convention exclusive, um, and that is 11 with electrodes. So I was actually at the 2017 New York Comic Con, but was not able to get my hands on her at the Funko booth. Um, I think that this is one of the years where they had started doing the lottery system, and I unfortunately was not picked for the lottery and did not get a chance to get this pop. But I was able to, I think this might have been exclusive at GameStop. Um, if not GameStop, then probably Hot Topic. Um, but I was able to order it from there, and so I do have this one in my collection. Up next we have Lucas. So there he is. He has his little binoculars. I thought that he had his slingshot but maybe that's another series or season uh, Lucas Pop that has the slingshot. But yep he has his little um, camo bandana there and his binoculars and he is ready to hunt some Demogorgons. Up next we have Dustin. And he is just there in his blue jacket with his signature cap. And he has the little compass in his hands. And then, of course, we have Will, who unfortunately goes missing in season one into the upside down. Um, but so this is him pre-disappearance. He has his little jacket and backpack and his adorable little bowl cut haircut. Up next, we have Nancy Wheeler. Um, definitely one of my favorite characters and I absolutely love this pop. I love the details. Uh, like I just love like her hair, how it has like that messy bun kind of look to it. Um, and she has the little gun in her hands. And then of course you can't have Nancy without Jonathan Byers, Will's brother. So he has his camera. And then up next we have Joyce Byers, Will's mom with her Christmas lights that she uses to communicate with Will. I absolutely love this pop because I just love the whole like where everybody thought that she was crazy for trying to talk to these Christmas lights. But it turns out that it actually was her son communicating with her and that she just never gave up hope. Um, I really, I think Joyce as a character is what really drew me to Stranger Things because she is just such a strong character and such a good mom to her kids. Um, where she literally like risks the whole town thinking that she's gone crazy in order to find her son and she doesn't give up no matter how impossible or improbable it seems. So yeah, I definitely love Joyce Byers. I love Winona Ryder as an actress. So yeah, this is definitely a favorite. Up next is another two pack of pops. So this one is a 2017 spring convention exclusive. So this was exclusive to Emerald City Comic Con and then they also sold it, I believe at FYE. Um, and it is Upside Down, Eleven, and Barb. So it is the two of them both well. They are in the Upside Down. Up next is the villain of season one, which is Dr. Brenner. Um, Eleven calls him Papa because he's kind of the head of the Hawkins lab and the only father figure that she has ever had. Up next is Eleven in her burger t-shirt. Next are two movie moments, Funkos. Um, I guess they're technically like TV moments, but um, this one is Steve fighting off the Demogorgon. I think this is from season one um, where they're kind of in the big uh, like junkyard and he is fighting off the Demogorgons. And then this one is Eleven fighting the Demogorgon and this is the last scene before she ends up disappearing back into the Upside Down. So this one's super cool. I love the detail, like the dark detail around her eyes and the blood coming out of her ear and the way the Demogorgon looks like he's like melting into the wall. And up next we have the common Demogorgon pop. So it is just like the mini version of the 10 inch one that I showed earlier. Up next are all of the chases and a couple more exclusives from season one. So first up we have the Barnes & Noble exclusive Dustin in his brown jacket. This was another one that was hard to come by. I never got him at Barnes & Noble when he was released. Um, I don't know if I ever actually saw him at Barnes & Noble, but yeah, so he is wearing a brown jacket instead of the blue jacket is the only difference. Um, and it took me a couple of years. I finally found one for a decent price at New York Comic Con and picked him up there. And then we have Upside Down Will. He was a Think Geek exclusive. He was another one that was kind of hard for me to find because we don't have any like Think Geek stores around here. And I don't think, I think they're kind of connected to GameStop, but our GameStops never got these. Um, so my only other option would have been online, but he sold out pretty quickly. Um, so again, I found it at New York Comic Con, um, maybe last year or year before. Um, for a pretty decent price and picked him up but so he is looking like super pale like he's in the upside down and he's also physically upside down in the box which i absolutely love and then we have a 2017 san diego comic-con exclusive and this is steve with the baseball bat looking super like beat up and bloody this was the first steve pop that they ever made so for a while he was a pretty hot commodity 
Um, I was lucky enough that I was able to order him from Hot Topic when they released because he was a shared exclusive. So the one that I have just has the summer convention sticker. Um, so now he is definitely not worth as much as he used to be. He was like $100 at some point and now I think he's only worth like $40. Um, but the convention exclusive sticker won um, like the, the San Diego Comic-Con stickered one I think is still like 60 maybe but here he is I super love him he's definitely one of my favorites and now for the three chasers from the season one series so we have 11 here with her egos and this time she has the wig on and she is like all cleaned up and has little rosy cheeks so super cute one there I was a little bit disappointed that like the only difference between this and the chaser was that she had the wig on I thought they could have done a little bit more but and then we have the hopper chase where this one was really a disappointment because the only difference is that he does not have his hat on in the chase variant which i feel like was just kind of lazy <laughs> to do on funko's part i was lucky enough to get these chase versions because this was back in the day when uh there wasn't as many rules for like hot topics on uh, Funkos and pop collecting um so we were I was friends with the manager at the time and he was actually able to hold the whole collection and like give me a call when they came in like the chases and like all the commons and everything so I was actually able to go in and like pick them all up at the same time um and he was able to hold them for me they can't do that anymore unfortunately they're not allowed to do any holds or anything like that um they have to put everything out new that they get for pops first thing in the morning um, these are the first Chase Pops that I was ever able to add to a collection before, so I was super excited about that. And then the next and final se Season 1 Pop and the third and final Chase is the Demogorgon Chase, and this one has him with the closed mouth, um, which I think just looks super cool and spooky. Moving on to Season 2 Pops. Um, the first thing is not a Pop, but it is a Dorbs. I think that this is supposed to be from Season 2, right, because he goes down into the little like upside-down cave in season two um so this is steve with the bandana and this is a 2019 2018 um san diego comic-con exclusive that i picked up from barnes and noble i usually don't buy dorbs but there was another one that i was picking up at the same time it was a san diego exclusive that year and i just grabbed him just to grab him so there he is and again just grabbing in no particular order first up we'll start with a hot topic exclusive this is dustin in his hockey gear next up we have the hopper from season two so this is him with a flashlight and he has on a little uh like police hoodie up next we have our first fox lunch exclusives so this is an 11 pop i call it the bitchin 11 pop um but she just has 11 on the box but um so this is her when she runs away and she's in her like badass outfit and she has a box of egos and her hair slicked back and her nose is bleeding up next is the Snowball Dance 11. So at the end of season two, her and Mike go to the Snowball Dance together. So this is her and her adorable little outfit from that. You have the little bow in her hair and the cute dress that she wore. And then you can't have Snowball 11 without Snowball Mike. So there he is in his adorable little like sweater with a tie and jacket. Up next is this Elevated 11. So this is towards the end of the season um, when she is closing up the little like portal um into the upside down and she is like standing on that platform and like raises up so she has her bloody nose and you see her eyes are all dark next we have dart who is the little baby demogorgon that dustin finds and thinks that he's like some weird amphibian thing so he keeps him as a pet and then we have joyce in her little like grocery store outfit like work uniform thing and then next up we have the villain from season two which is billy or well, I guess he's kind of sort of one of the villains. I don't know. <laughs> and so he's just in his leather jacket, obviously shirtless underneath because that's who he is as a person. Up next is another Hot Topic exclusive. And this one is Dustin and Dart. So you have little baby baby Dart down there and Dustin with his little weird like Ghostbusters contraption. <laughs> Up next we have Eleven and this is her using her power. And you see where her hair is kind of in the, that weird like in between growing out phase. Next up we have Hopper with vines. So this is when he gets stuck in those like vines down in the upside down um, tunnels under Hawkins. Next up we have the six inch Demogorgon. Up next is another two pack and this one was a 2018 uh san diego comic-con exclusive um i think that this is the one that i was getting from barnes and noble 
when I got the um the Steve Dorbs um and this is Billy with Karen Wheeler Micah Dancy's mom up next we have Max who is Billy's sister and um one of the new characters for season two she befriends Mike and the gang next up are two Steve Pops season two finally saw them making a few more Steves so here he is with his sunglasses and all dressed up to go fight some Demogorgons down in the upside down tunnels and then here he is kind of like an upside down Steve with the bandana and the glasses um because he is down in the tunnels fighting the Demogorgons in the upside down up next we have Dustin from the snowball dance um so with his hair that he did with the Farrah Fawcett spray <laughs> looking super dapper there and this was another 2018 summer convention exclusive up next we have all the kids in their Ghostbusters Halloween costumes so again we have Dustin and he has a little ghost catcher thing his little uh, candy bag and it even has the detail of having the name of which Ghostbuster they are on it so it has stamps on the little tag there it's gonna be hard to read on camera but I promise you it's there <laughs> and then you have Lucas in the Venkman outfit and then you have Will as Spangler. Yeah, and he's got the candy bag. He has a little like ghost reading machine. And last but not least, Mike also dressed as a Venkman because him and Lucas argue over who gets to be Venkman. And then next up we have Max in her um, Michael Myers Halloween costume with her little jack-o'-lantern trick-or-treat bag with the knife there. She's super cute. She's a Hot Topic exclusive and she is definitely one of my favorite Stranger Things pops I have to date. Up next are the two Bob pops. So this one is Bob in his scrubs. This is towards the end of the season when he unfortunately gets killed by the Demogorgons. And then here is the GameStop exclusive of Bob in his vampire Halloween costume. So he has his little fangs there and is just looking super spooky. And then the last season two pop is the Chase version of Dart. So there he is with his little closed mouth. And now on to season three pops. So first up we have this 11. Season three really went like all out with the 80s like mall kid vibe. So I love that the boxes look like super on theme with that. But then you have like little upside down ripping through. So there is 11 in her little overall outfit. And then we have yet another 11. There were a lot of 11 pops with the season three release, um, but here she is in her little romper. And yet another 11. This is battle 11 when she's bi blindfolded and she has her little bloody nose. And then we have Will the Wise because he is like the head of their like D&D campaign and season three sees a lot of struggle with Will still kind of being childish and wanting to play D&D with his friends while they're all kind of moving on. So I love this pop. Next up, we have a new character this season who is Lucas's little sister. Well, she's kind of new. We sort of met her in the first couple of seasons, but she really played a big part in this season. Um, and that is Erica. I absolutely adore Erica. I think that she is hilarious and just super cute and spunky with so much attitude. Um, she's just like the typical like annoying baby sister and I absolutely love it. Next up we have the Target exclusive version of Will the Wise. So the only difference is that this one does glow in the dark. Next up is yet another 11. I think this is the nope next to last one. Um, and this is a Hot Topic exclusive and this is her in her jacket, the red jacket. So this is Dustin in his Camp Nowhere outfit. He goes to a summer camp called Camp Nowhere. Um, and so this is kind of the outfit that he has to wear and this is where he meets the love of his life, Susie, who everybody is convinced is not real for the majority of the season. But then we find out that Susie is in fact real when Dustin radios to her to help him um, solve a problem in their fight against the Demogorgons on the Upside Down and everything. So there is Susie with her little microphone that she uses to communicate with Dustin. And this one was a 2019 fall convention exclusive. So up next we have the Target exclusive Dustin. This one came in a box set with a t-shirt. Um, and so this is him. He has his Camp Nowhere hat and then he has the t-shirt from the little like, TV show that he watches. Up next we have Mike. Um, I think this is Mike from the end of the season when the buyers are packing up their house to move. 
and then we have 11 from the same part of that of the season and this is what's a target exclusive and she has the little teddy bear that she finds next up is hopper from season three when he um is supposed to be taking joyce out on a date so up next is the flayed Billy Pop. So in season three, Billy becomes like kind of taken over by the Demogorgon slash the upside down like mind flayer um, thing that is like sort of what controls the upside down. And here we have Joyce with her magnets because she becomes obsessed with the fact that the magnets stop working in season three. Up next, we have the gold Demogorgon. And this one was a 2020 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. I'm so sorry, this was a 2019 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Um, so this one is super cool. He's kind of like the gold hopper that they did, except he was a lot more widely available. Thank God. <laughs> so I was able to get my hands on him. And my last two season three pops are both of Steve in his Scoops Ahoy outfit. So here is just regular Scoops Ahoy Steve there with the ice cream and his adorable uniform. And then this was actually a Baskin Robbins exclusive. This one was so hard to find, um, but I did end up being able to get it at the Baskin Robbins right by my house, but it took days of calling and stopping in and asking if they finally had it. And I think the kids sold it to me a couple days early, but that's totally fine. And he charged me like 20 or $25 for it, which was crazy, but all the Baskin Robbins got to make up their own prices on them, which was kind of annoying worth it to have this to add to my collection so there he is with like a banana split Sunday so super cool um one of the ones that I am missing from the season three collection is Robin um who is his love interest and then he finds out that she likes girls and then she becomes his like best friend so I need to get my hands on Robin they came out with like a common one but they also had one that was a comic-con exclusive there was a set of her and Steve together um or like well two separate pops but they were um kind of released together of her and Steve. So I definitely want to get my hands on those because Robin is one of my new favorite characters in the whole series um, for very obvious reasons. Um, if you have been watching this channel for a while, but yeah, so super love queer icon Robin and need to find her for my pop collection. Okay, up next are all of the 8-bit Funkos or most of them, I'm missing two chasers. Otherwise I have them all. So here is 8-bit 11 with her egos and her little bloody nose. Some of the boxes on these are a little bit like atrocious. Um, they're like very heavy pops so they kind of like deform the boxes a little bit, but. And then here we have Mike. All these 8-bit ones are essentially the common forms of their season one pops, just looking like little video game characters. Um, I don't know if these coincided with the release of the iPhone app game, but that was super fun. Who remembers that? <laughs> but that was kind of done in an 8-bit format. And then we have Lucas. Um, and yeah, these were all Target exclusive, so you could buy them separately, or they eventually came out with a box set where they all came in an arcade game. And I actually ended up getting that one. My partner gifted it to me for Christmas, which was super sweet. And then we have Will. There is a chaser where he is upside down Will that I do not have, unfortunately. One of the few, again, that I am missing. We have Dustin. We have the Demogorgon. And he was another one that came with a chase variant that I do not have. Because, again, these were Target exclusive, so they were super hard to come by, especially the chasers. So still do not have that one and then we have barb she was an emerald city comic-con exclusive um so she came separate from that set she's like the heaviest funko pop i think i own um but yeah she's just the typical barb in just an 8-bit style up next is a hot topic exclusive and is not really super stranger thingsy but it is um <laughs> it's the writers and creators of the stranger things the duffer brothers in pop form so these were supposed to be limited edition of 2000 i don't know what the limited edition actually ended up being um because i think they did make more or fewer i don't i honestly don't know but um yeah these released at hot topic um and luckily my partner was able to buy them secondhand for me because i was not able to get them on hot topic and then last up are four funko uh san diego comic-con exclusives from i think it was like a funko fun days event is what it was called um but they did these like little mystery box like locker things that came with super limited funko pops and the theme of the 
2018 Comic-Con one happened to be Stranger Things. So they were all, these are all Freddy Funkos dressed as Stranger Things characters. So here we have Freddy Funko as Upside Down Will, and this is limited of 450. So the second of these Freddy Funko pops that I have um, is the Freddy Funko Dustin. Um, so this one was also a limited edition of 450. So super cool one there. He has like the same outfit and everything that the original Dustin pop has. Um, just is Freddy Funko who is kind of the mascot for Funko for anybody who is not super familiar. I was able to get these off of the website of um, Gemini Collectibles. Um, they are a company that um, sells Funko Pops um, and other collectibles. Um, and they frequently partner with Funko. They do get like a limited stock of some of these kinds of collectibles from different conventions and things like that. Sometimes they release their own exclusives um, with Funko. So that is where I was able to get these. I did have to pay a pretty penny to get them. Um, but I think that it was totally worth the splurge. Next up is a Steve one. So this is Steve with the sunglasses, Freddy Funko. Um, so super cool one. They're also limited edition of 450. Oh, and yeah, you can see there it says Fun Days 2018. So yeah, Funko Fun Days was the event. And then last but certainly not least, because I think that this was the most popular of the releases from Fun Days that year, it is the Freddy Funko as Steve with the bat. So there he is all bloodied up holding the bat with the nails in it. Um, and yeah, this one was super popular and it's just a super cool, super cool pop. These are the only Freddy Funko pops I have in my collection. These end up being typically worth a lot of money. Like each of these is worth a couple hundred dollars right now. So yeah, again, because Freddy is the mascot and they do all kinds of cool ones like these, um, they typically, and they are more limited, um, so they do tend to be worth a little bit more money. Okay, and that about wraps up my Stranger Things Funko haul. That is every single Stranger Things pop that I own, and minus maybe like 10 that is every Stranger Things pop in existence currently. Um, so let me know down below which pop from this collection is your favorite. Um, do you have any of these Stranger Things pops? Do you have a more complete collection than I do? I would love to hear about it. Um, so yeah, comment down below, let me know. And if you like this video, please give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that you can come get stuck in the upside down with me again soon. And as always, I hope that you guys have a magical week and I hope you're having an awesome spooky season and I will see you in the next one. Bye.